Good day, everybody. Rob here, WesternPacificWeather.com. It is currently the 1st of February, 2011, and the big topic of today is this uh, tropical cyclone out there, tropical cyclone Yasi. Current winds out of the system right around 100, gusting up to about 120 knots. Uh, that is as of a uh, 02 Zulu when this uh, update's coming out right now here. And uh, overall, though, a very large system out of this. Actually, one of the uh, notes from Bureau of Meteorology is that the 34 knot winds, that's the tropical storm equivalent force winds and stronger actually extend approximately 140 nautical miles or 260 kilometers from the northern periphery out here so a very large storm rate in here the overall rain bands extending out several hundred nautical miles in every direction here so that's going to be the biggest concern as of right now is that overall wind field and rain field coming out of the system as it continues to track off towards the west towards Queensland here and here uh, putting out the enhanced IR shot you really can get a more of a feel for these higher cloud tops up in here and the overall banding out of the system with the uh, widest being the colder cloud tops that's what I mean by the uh, IR it's infrared here and just showing all these clouds right in here probably about 20 to 30 thousand feet throughout this entire area so that's really showing the strongest area convection out here uh, not looking at a very clear and defined eye just yet out of the system I would not be surprised as it continues to strengthen up to a max of possibly up to about 120 to 130 knots sustained uh, just to put that in perspective that's about the equivalent of a category 4 uh, typhoon slash hurricane and very near to the same equivalent as a super typhoon just up here in the northern hemisphere and here showing the most recent microwave imagery from the MT sat here uh, showing the uh, or actually taking out that overall cirrus shield on top of this and showing those really strong thunderstorms within the core of the system you still got this eye wall continuing to develop in here so that's one thing to know even though you don't see that I in the uh, visible and IR imagery there is one forming in here so this is where that most destructive winds and the highest uh, level of precipitation is going to be located right in here and also you got some very strong banding coming out here from the uh, especially on the uh, northern periphery extending out up here past the Solomon Islands up in this region here and that's what the uh, indicating by those tropical storm force winds uh, extending far from the core it's mainly in these uh, areas of banding along the uh, northern periphery up here and lastly, on the uh, current synoptic situation on the storm, I'm going to show you the ASCAT imagery here. Now, this is taken basically from a satellite and down a radar beam off the uh, surface of the ocean here. It measures the uh, wave heights of the uh, waves out here and also the direction they're traveling. It gives you a really good estimation on how fast the winds are traveling out here. Seeing some in excess of about 50 knots right in this region here. That's your, uh, near the uh, core of the storm. I know we don't have a full circulation pass on this. This is actually coming from a polar orbiter, which is travels in this direction like this so you're only going to get partial passes most of the time but the main reason why I want to show this is showing the strong wind field extending out in both directions these are winds above 30 knots all the way up in this region and extending 700 several hundred kilometers in the south here as well and as already noting that's really going to be one of the uh, big uh, factors playing into the storm as it continues off to the west is the overall largeness of this wind field extending out in all directions now enough about what is going on currently with the storm I know everybody wants to know where is it going well this is one of the main tools I like to use when forecasting out is this is a streamline analysis here uh, showing tomorrow morning or this morning actually a 00z and uh, you, when you look at this you really want to average out the general direction of all these flows right in here and you want to kind of depict the overall background flow as this low wants to kind of travel along with that uh, looking right near the center of the storm it does shoot off to the north here the uh, streamline well that's basically because the storm is so immense that it's affecting the overall flow in here so that's why you want to kind of average what's out ahead of it and that basically does take it due west towards Queensland uh, pretty obvious in that and it's just moving along north of this anticyclonic flow farther down to the south here around this uh, pretty strong area of high pressure around 1025 millibars uh, located just off of New South Wales here and that's really what is the main steering force of this as it continues to track off here after it does cross over Queensland it does, is likely going to be continue to track eventually off towards the south and the southwest here but but uh, right now, though, it's going to continue just to move uh, straight due west here and uh, showing you the Bureau of Meteorology's uh, forecast out on this. They continue to uh, put out these tropical cyclone warnings right near the coast. Uh, it's currently, the system does continue to look like the track is edging slightly farther towards the north here. Actually, now towards uh, Cairns, right, just uh, making landfall just north of Cairns per the most recent warnings. But I do want to note that... 
cone of air uh, still extends from here up in Cooktown down near Townsville so that is uh, really where the overall track could waver over the next uh, 48 hours as the storm continues to track off in this direction but right now not looking too uh, good for cans as the system looks like it's going to be making landfall just north of there that puts them right in the left front quadrant where the strongest winds are uh, going to be occurring. Uh, when I say the strongest winds it's actually a uh, part of forward momentum as well just noting that out here so if this storm continues to move right around 10 knots and you have 100 knot winds at landfall actually on the left front quadrant here you're going to be seeing 110 knot winds because you're counting in the forward momentum of the storm as well into this but I think the uh, the biggest thing to note though is that the size of this storm is also producing a fairly large storm surge. Uh, winds coming across in the southern periphery here have a large fetch area. That's the overall distance the wind's going to travel in pushing these waves on shore. So around Cairns, Innisfail, and all the way down here towards Townsville, uh, I would expect a fairly strong storm surge near the coast. So. Uh, I'm not trying to put out the fear in anybody here, but uh, this is the time to actually start evacuating from the coast here. The Bureau of Meteorology has already put this out. And another thing they like to, they put out, and I really want to push on to everybody here, is make sure you inform your neighbors, especially people who are new to the tropical cyclones in here, or may not understand English that well. That's uh, straight up from the Bureau of Meteorology. It's one of their most recent warnings on this storm. So I really like that tidbit. Kind of get your neighbors, get them aware of this uh, size of this storm out here as it continues to track off towards the uh, Queensland coast here. And another thing I do want to note, they also extend these uh, tropical cyclone watches very far inland here, and that's uh, mainly due to the size of the storm as it's going to continue to travel, but also the rainfall farther inland. Your possibility of uh, some flash flooding uh, in there, also some mudslides wrapped up in that, and also noting that with the floods in the last several months up here, uh, looking at the uh, soil being very well saturated throughout that entire region, plus tropical cyclone and Anthony just moving through uh, just less than a few ago so all that combined could make that flooding situation uh, farther inland that much worse but uh, moving on to the JTWC warning here as well they Kaliani a similar track as the Bureau of Meteorology this warning is a little bit low old here and I'm sure that they'll probably swing up to the north here as well near Cairns on their next warning here but the do thing the thing I want to know with this one is that looking at a max about 125 gusting up to 150 knots here in the morning of the second and then as it starts to Across the reef here, it's going to encounter a little bit less unfavor, or less favorable conditions just prior to landfall. Could weaken it very, very slightly, about five to ten knots. Uh, don't get your hopes up too much on that though uh, even though it is going to weaken or it will likely weaken that does not mean that is going to take away from the significance of this storm still looking at the equivalent of a category 3 category 4 cyclone cyclone out here with winds upwards of about 120 knots sustained at times near the uh, core of the system so looking at the most uh, updated satellite imagery from Google Earth here with the GTWC track overlaid right in here a little bit farther south than the Bureau of Meteorology Bureau of Meteorology actually has has it making landfall rate right in this region but nonetheless though any areas here from all the way down near Townsville, Innisfail and up in Cairns here all need to watch this. If I was in any of the coastal low-lying areas throughout this entire region definitely uh, take heed uh, get away from the coast if you have anywhere to go inland I would very highly suggest doing so this is the time to actually start uh, gearing up for those warnings or gearing up for those evacuations now don't wait to the last second uh, I've been through some hurricane and typhoon evacuations and trust me it's no fun once everybody tries to move out at the same time so nothing I do want to know as I already noted on yesterday wherever this storm makes landfall the left qu quadrant so if it does make landfall here right around Cairns Innisfil is going to be in the left front quadrant where the max amount of storm surge can occur here uh, that storm surge with that fetch area as noted earlier but also the uh, overall low pressure from the system which could um, possibly get down to 939 millibars that's from the Bureau of Meteorology raises the sea level itself maybe one to two feet then on top of the winds that all comes inland so even if it is that low tide when the system does make landfall there's still high possibility of a very strong storm surge in those coastal areas so definitely uh, keep an eye on that if you are farther inland uh, don't venture out during the storm uh, obviously but the big thing I do want to know and this was actually put out in a few of the agencies here is that the eye wall itself and currently is about um, about 50 to 60 nautical miles across so it could take more than an hour to move through your local region if you are within that eye so uh, if the weather does calm down and you know you're still inside that eye don't get out and venture around 
around. I think that's pretty much a given for most people, but especially for people that are new to Tropical Sun. But that is all I have for this morning, everybody. Actually, while I was doing this update, I refreshed the uh, visible imagery here, and now you can start to see this eye forming right in here. You still have that uh, low Q right in the middle of this, but you really start to see that eye wall forming up here. So just showing how the system continues to strengthen throughout the, the day here, especially once it continues to travel off to the west here. Still in that low vertical wind shear, still getting all that inflow coming into it, and still in high sea surface temperatures. So all the ingredients for this just big pot uh, stew of tropical cyclone uh, formation. So uh, that's all for today, everybody. Or actually, that's all for this morning. I likely have another update this evening. Also, I have a, another person putting on videos here, a Solar Watcher. Make sure you check out his YouTube channel as well. And uh, thank you for all the comments on here as well, especially people that are passing on the information from the various sources and uh, kind of give me a little help and information how to make these videos that much better. So uh, thank you very much for that. So hope everybody has a great day. Stay safe out there. And that's your WesternPacificWeather.com update for today. Bye.